Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Miss Van Loon. And in this video, we are going to create a hybrid animal. It's going to be a little awkward. It's going to be a little funny. And hopefully, we'll have a lot of fun. All right, as you can see, I made a little page of notes for you. If you're a notes kind of person, write these down. Hopefully, they'll help. There's two main parts to this process. The first one is sourcing our images. And there's two big categories we want to pay attention to. The first one is copyright. We are going to be looking for CC0, CCBY, CCSA, these kind of Creative Commons copyright licenses that mean it's okay for us to use those images. We are going to be looking to make sure that the images are compatible. We are going to look at the resolution. We want to make sure the images are large enough that we can edit them and get a good result. We are going to be looking at the lighting. In order to create a more seamless blending between two photographs, we need to look at the lighting. And finally, the position of our subjects. It will be much easier to blend them together if they are in a similar position or in some sort of position that allows us to stick them together. Next, working in Photoshop. A couple things to keep track of. Number one, we want to work non-destructively. That means in, when we're working in our files and our layers, we are going to make copies of the photos and work on the copy, the layer copy. Okay, so we're going to copy the layer that has the photo on it and then we'll edit that one. That way, in our actual project file down there at the bottom, we have the original photo. So if we ever need to go back, it's still there. Yes, you will be graded on the ability to work non-destructively because da -da 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 that's a, a drum roll. It's part of your standards. Okay. <laughs> Next, working organized. We're going to name our layers so that when we have like you know, 20, 25 layers, and we go back and we want to find something to edit, it's named and we can find it easier and we can fix it. Finally, masking and blending. We're going to be doing a lot of this and this just needs a demo. So we're going to jump right into it. Let's go. So this is my dog. So I'm, I'm looking at the shape of her and I'm thinking about like what I could put on here or what we could cut out her head and put on something else. The positioning of the animals and pick two animals that are going to kind of stick together, like, you know, in a fairly easy way to like stick them together, but also to choose similar lighting. I don't know. Let's say horse. Let's go to images and then let's do tools and we'll do labeled for reuse. And let's see. One of the things that I kind of want to pay attention to is if they're going to blend, you know, fairly easily together. You know, these horses are the same color, but they're not really standing in the same position. I mean, I guess maybe I could take this horse head and put it on her, depending on how big the the photo is. Oh, it's 608 pixels by 402 pixels. So this photo, which is two and a half megabytes, it's a big photo, size... More info. Okay, dimensions. So right here, it's 2,448 pixels by 3,264 pixels. This is what's known as resolution. So this is a huge photo. So if I was to use this photo right here, which is from the National Park Service, nps.gov, which means it is public domain, so we can use it. I would, I'd go to the website and just double check. So it's 608 pixels by 402 pixels. So that's like this big compared to my picture of the dog. So it's very small. Now I would have to blow it up really big just to get this horse head. That's not really going to help me. I, it's going to look really awkward. Okay, let's keep looking. Maybe we'll find another horsey picture. I could maybe just take this horse head and put it on her. All right, let's try it. Let's see. And it's 1024 by 722. So that's that's a fairly large size. 
and it should be big enough that when I stick it on here, it's not going to be weird. Hey, jumping in here, spoiler alert. Um, I go through, it uh, lines up, I um, check the you know, copyright. I'm like, okay, I need to credit the creator. I go through all of the process and this is what I end up with. But also to choose similar lighting. Okay, let me show you how that turned out. Here it is. So after messing around and editing, let me zoom in here. This is what I got. So at the cost of wasting all the time that I spent on that one, um, I went back to Google Images and I did the exact same search horse labeled for reuse and I scrolled down past this guy, this gorgeous hair in the sun, <laughs> golden hour picture of this very photogenic horse. And I kept scrolling and looking, looking, seeing if there's anything that's, you know, similar position. And I went, oh, look at this guy. Hey, this one is standing in about the same position so I could stick them together nicely. So about the same body position and the lighting isn't so bad. It's not so different. I mean, we do have some shadows across it, but I don't think that's, I don't think it's going to be as bad as the blatantly obvious different um, lighting from the first image that I chose. So when I click on it and I look at the licensing, so it already says here free image for commercial use. And then I come down here. This photo is free for commercial use. And commercial is the most restrictive because that means that you can sell it. So if it's free for commercial, it's free for the other ones too. Private use and putting it on social media and for education and all that. So we're good to go here. It is, it, they have it in the public domain. So awesome. All right, I'm gonna open this in Photoshop. Okay, so here's my base. I am going to command J or control J to duplicate that layer. That way I'm not going to edit my background layer. Remember, we want to work non-destructively. So let's rename this. Okay. The next step is to bring in the horse picture or your second animal picture. And please pay attention to whether you need to hold shift to constrain proportions or not hold shift to constrain proportions. You don't want it getting all skewed. Try to line up the size of your second animal photo so that it is about the size you think you're going to need it. Next, you're going to use the selection tool. I am using the quick selection tool to select a large area. This part doesn't need to be perfect. Please don't spend a bunch of time trying to get the edge perfect. If you do want to clean up some of your selection, you can use the different selection options in the top left. For example, I'm using the minus to remove some of what I selected. The next step is to go to the layers panel and click on the mask button. It is at the bottom. It is the rectangle with the circle cut out of it. Now I have the image of the horse with the mask that basically covers up the part of the image that I don't want. I'm gonna get rid of her head, her face, really just the face and ears. I'm gonna leave the neck to try and, if I need to blend the two layers together at all, I'm not sure what I'll need, but I'm gonna leave her neck I'm just going to try to get rid of her face and ears. And to do that again, I'm going to go to the quick selection tool and I need the plus and I'm just going to highlight her head and ears. Now I'm using a tool that I recently learned about. If you want to watch the entire tutorial, I will link it in the lesson, but it's this one right here. So if you guys just finished the beginner photo compositing course, which is these five videos here, 
And on this main Photoshop tutorials page, the very next video is how to remove objects using content aware fill. So if you like this and you're like, wow, I want to watch that tutorial and actually get more information than Miss Van Lona is giving me, go watch it. I'll put the link in here. So uh, we have our selection. We are on the layer that we want. We're going to go edit and content aware fill. And I'm going to zoom out a little further. And what we see is that it's kind of ghosting. So I'm on this lasso tool, which is the selection. And I'm going to actually expand the selection out a little bit and see if maybe I can get rid of more bits. So it says 10 pixels. That's fine. I'm going to expand. Wow, that made a huge difference just by expanding my selection out a little bit. I am also going to redo the area that it is sampling from. So basically this tool takes the information from around where we want to get rid of, and it it doesn't squish it together necessarily, but it tries to repeat in this area what it sees around here. So it's a fairly intelligent algorithm, but it's not perfect. I'm going to tell it not to sample any of this grass. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of all this down here because we don't need any of that. I had a really fun one where it actually took her tail and it recreated the tail right here. So it's, um, it's a really funny tool when it does some funny stuff on its own. And I'm going to get rid of the body because we just want that gray area. Mm. I actually kind of like it having the, the like nub come up because <laughs> it kind of like nestles in. Let's see what's going on with this section here. Maybe I can um, add in an area for it to get rid of. There, that's a little better. All right, I don't hate that. Oh, we've got some ghosting here with the ear, so let's add that to our selection. Let's just, in fact, increase this a little bit more. Okay, let's just, let's see how that looks. Let's go back to layers, oh, Control D or command D to deselect, D for deselect, and that's pretty good. Okay, let's cover up a little bit more of our horse. So I am on the mask, the layer mask, I grab my paintbrush tool and I make sure I'm on black and the brackets make my paintbrush bigger or smaller and I'm just going to get rid of all right I think it's too big at the moment so let's grab the horse and we'll go ahead and command T and try and make her a little smaller and that's actually fitting quite nicely I like how that's looking I can use my arrows left and right to kind of nudge it. <laughs> it looks like it looks like a potato, a little a little chunk, but we can clean that up. All right, I'm going to zoom in, command plus or control plus and go back to my layer mask, my paintbrush tool. I'm on black. And just to clarify what I'm doing is when I have the color black and I am painting on the mask, that is the part that I am covering up. If I switch to white and color on the mask, that is the part that I'm going to bring back. And if I switch to a gray color and I color on the mask, then I am going to have transparent or translucent kind of seeing a little bit of both. I can see a little bit of this green I'm going to take the flow down a little bit. I'm going to leave it on black. Not that. And I have a very fuzzy brush right now. So it's very soft. 
it's not a hard edge it's a very soft edge kind of like a spray paint and when I take the flow down I can go right next to it and it's gonna kind of feather that edge just where I see that green from the grass okay how are we doing over here I think all of that looks pretty good all right and in this section of the video I am just zooming in on those details I am checking do I like the position of the horse head moving it up moving it down re re-blending um, remasking I'm also playing around with the flow so one of your options is that instead of choosing a gray color to get kind of a transparent um, blending you could just turn the flow down on your black and then that still gives you the same effect where you're kind of feathering in the edge and then turn it back up and choose a hard brush if you want to get a crisp line and if you want to get a feathered line turn the flow down and choose a soft brush. All right, and that is the end of the hybrid animal. I hope that that helped demo some of the tools and some of the process. This kind of re-edit of a previous video that I made that definitely needed some editing. So let me know if you have some feedback. Let me know if you have any questions, and I hope that you play around with it. And just know that you may find some different tools that work better for you, a different process, and that's fine. This is just the one that I have right here. And I got away with not having to do any sort of light blending because I sourced good images that had similar lighting from the get-go. So guess that's it. <laughs>